Hello and welcome to this video on student jobs for international and refugee students. Hello, I'm Miriam. And I'm Pia, and together we would like to introduce you to the advantages of working alongside your studies, how much you can work and how much you are allowed to earn. We would like to give you suggestions on where and in which field you could work and finally give you tips on how to write your application. Studying is your main job for now. But it can be beneficial to work in addition to lectures and studying. Not only can you earn some money, but you can gain important work experience for your career entry. Because your chances are better if you already have work experience. With a student job you can already build up a network and it can be helpful for your integration in Germany. In addition to helpful contacts, you will get to know the German labor market and work culture. Through student jobs, you can easily try out what you enjoy and find out in which field you would like to work after graduation. In addition, a job will help you to improve your German language skills. Well, that sounds great, doesn't it? So should you start right away? It depends. When you have just started your studies, I am recommending to focus on university first, before thinking about working. Because starting your studies can be challenging. You have to learn how to organize yourself and how university works. After you pass your first exams, you will be able to better assess how much time and energy you have for a student job. Let's move on to the legal issues because there are a few things to keep in mind. Never work without an employment contract. It contains not only your duties, but also your rights. In Germany, there is a minimum wage of 12 euros an hour. This is what you will earn in any case. Depending on the industry and your previous work experience, your hourly wage may be higher. If you only earn up to 520 euros per month, this is called a mini-job. You do not have to pay taxes, and you can also be exempted from pension insurance. If you earn more than 520 euros, then you have no choice. You automatically pay into the pension insurance. The contribution is deducted directly from your salary. And what about taxes? Here, you have to calculate how much you earn in a year. There is a tax allowance of around 11,000 euros. As long as you do not exceed this amount, you do not have to pay taxes. If they were deducted from your salary nevertheless, you can get that money back via a tax return. Please check the figures given for the current year, because they can always change. Important! If you get a scholarship or BAföG, please ask if you are allowed to earn anything and if so, how much. There are also rules when it comes to working hours. Students are generally allowed to work up to 20 hours a week. The thought behind this is that studying is sort of your full-time job, and studying is what most of your time should be used for. If you decide to work more, you will lose the privileges of being a student and will have to pay full insurance contributions. However, there are exceptions. Students can work more hours on weekends, during the lecture-free period, or for a short and limited period of time. But different rules apply depending on your nationality and your current resident status in Germany. Students who are citizens of countries that are part of the European Union, the EEA, and Switzerland stand practically on equal terms with German students and have free access to the German job market. Students with a refugee background can work depending on the status of their asylum process. Students who do not come from the EU, EEA, or Switzerland, who normally have a student residence title according to paragraph 16b, are allowed to work, but only for a limited amount of full days and half days a year. However, If you are employed at your university, as a student assistant, you can work without restrictions, since it is assumed that jobs in the academic sphere have a positive impact on your studies. Make sure to inform your immigration officer before starting to work more than the allowed amount of full or half days to avoid any problems. Self-employment or freelance work is only possible in exceptional cases and with the approval of the immigration office. What are the typical forms of work students do? There are three. For example, you can work in a mini-job. That's up to 520 euros a month. 
you can also split it between two jobs. The job can be in a company or in a private household. Another possibility is short-term employment, for example a semester break job that lasts no longer than three months. And the classic is working as a so-called Werkstudent, which is a regular job that you do alongside your studies for up to 20 hours a week and for a longer period of time. You pay into the pension insurance and depending on how much you earn, taxes are added. Okay, we have checked off the legal framework. Now, where can you get your first work experience? Most students start out in jobs that are not directly related to their studies or career aspirations. And that's perfectly fine. Some work in a restaurant or cafe, some give private lessons or work in the social sector, as an assistant or in child care, for example. A few work in retail, for example, in a supermarket, others in customer service, in a warehouse or laboratory, and others start directly at the university as a student assistants. These are all good entry-level opportunities. But over time, you should try to find part-time jobs that are more in line with your course of study and more in the direction of your career aspirations. However, these jobs usually need better language skills, which is why you could first improve your German in a restaurant and then apply for an office job. Another way to gain first practical experience is volunteering. This is possible for as little as one hour and in many different areas, whether in nature preservation, social or political engagement or involvement in sports. In addition to gaining important experience, there's another positive. A commitment in volunteering can be an advantage when you apply for a job, as you have demonstrated positive qualities, such as motivation or the ability to work in a team. Therefore, always ask for a certificate for the commitment, which you can attach to your application. By the way, the Marburg-Biedenkopf Volunteer Agency will support you in your search for a suitable commitment. If you are looking for a student job, there is also the question of where you would like to work. There are a number of companies and businesses here in Marburg and Central Hesse. You might be familiar with the big brand names, but it's really worth looking around the region and getting in touch with companies you haven't heard of before. Of course, you can also use your semester ticket and take the train to Gießen or Frankfurt. In Frankfurt, you might also find more internationally oriented companies. Another option is to work remotely, which is also possible in some student jobs. In general, German is the main language spoken in the job market, which means it is important to know German for your career entry here. But even with little knowledge of German, you can gain initial experience. These are usually more physical jobs, such as in production, in the warehouse, in catering or at events. But you can also look for jobs in English, either in an international company or in jobs where the language is directly involved, such as translating, tutoring or customer service. You may now have a better idea of what and where you would like to work, but how do you find a job opening? Most people search for jobs online, as there are many job portals. In your internet search, you can use certain keywords and optionally add your field of study or a city. If you want links to different portals, you are welcome to check our website. In addition to the internet, analog bulletin boards are also a possibility for finding offers. People post a notice in the cafeteria or supermarket when they are looking for support, for example for gardening or babysitting. In the same way, You can post a notice here if you'd like to offer tutoring, for example. You can also keep an eye out when you walk through Marburg. Many restaurants and stores have notes in the windows that they are looking for staff. If you know a company that interests you, it is worthwhile to look directly on the company website to see if they have open positions. There, you will also find the contact person to whom you can send your unsolicited application. This means applying on your own initiative. There is no advertisement to which you apply. The advantage? 
there is no competition. The disadvantage, maybe the company has nothing free at the moment. You can also easily apply in cafes and restaurants without an advertisement. You can take a chance to go in and ask directly at the counter. Some people also find the job through contacts, through the network they have already built up during their studies or in their free time. So, don't hesitate to ask your fellow students in the seminar where they work. Job fairs are another great opportunity, especially for international students. Here, wide varieties of companies have a booth and you can talk directly to the employees, introduce yourself and ask questions about the company. And lastly, it is possible to be found passive by signing up for social networks like LinkedIn or Xing and creating a profile. When you have found a job advertisement that interests you, it is important to read it carefully and address it in your motivation letter. But you don't have to meet all the requirements. A job advertisement lists what an ideal candidate would look like for the company. But if you don't fulfill all the requirements, you still have a chance by convincing the company that you are willing to learn and are able to do the job well. Also read carefully how the application should be sent, who the contact person is and what documents are needed. Often it says the usual application documents. These are firstly the cover letter, secondly the CV and thirdly references and certificates. Usually you can send everything bundled in a PDF document by email, but sometimes there are also online portals for uploading. What should be in the attachment? It definitely needs a school certificate or, if you are already in a master's program, your bachelor's certificate then your enrollment certificate and the transcript of records showing your progress and achievements to date. This is followed by work references from other first jobs, internships or certificates of volunteer work. The core of your application is the cover letter, a motivation letter. The cover letter should not simply be a summary of your CV. That's why you have the CV as an extra document to list your individual stations. The following questions can help you guide your writing. Who am I? What are my skills? What are my goals? And why this company? You think you don't have much experience to describe? Wrong, because through your studies alone, you have already demonstrated and learned important skills. So go ahead and emphasize that. For example, project management skills through a project work in a seminar or a term paper with extensive data collection. In the cover letter, as in the interview, it's all about good argumentation. The cover letter looks like a letter with a letterhead. It should be only one page long, contain your contact details and be signed at the bottom with the date and place. It can also include some color and graphic elements. You can find many examples for templates online. The CV is a well-structured overview in which one can see at one glance what kind of experience and skills you already have. Typical elements are your contact details, your work experience, your education and your knowledge and interests. The CV should be anti-chronological. This means the most recent should come first. A photo is optional. You can use one, but you don't have to. You can make your CV traditional or more individual and creative. This depends a bit on the company and the sector. But make sure that your CV and the cover letter have the same design. Just have a look online. You will find many examples and free templates. Your written application was successful and you are invited for an interview. Congratulations, you have cleared the first obstacle. But the interview is still an important challenge. In a personal interview, you have to introduce yourself, answer questions and convince the employer that you are the right fit. Therefore, it is best to practice the interview with friends in a role play. You can find a list of typical questions online. 
especially how to introduce yourself at the beginning and how to summarize your CV, can be easily prepared and practiced. My tip? Emphasize the positive aspects of your international background. After all, moving to a foreign country and starting your studies here shows that you are courageous, committed, flexible and open. Pay attention to your gestures and facial expressions during the interview and think about what you want to wear beforehand. It's also important to prepare your questions towards the company because at the end of the interview you usually have the chance to ask your own questions, so it's best to think about them beforehand. And last but not least, be courageous and open. If there is something you don't understand or don't know, say so and feel free to ask. That's it with our tips on how to find a part-time job. Still have questions? No problem. We are here for you and we'll be happy to advise you. You can find our contact details on our website and you can also find the link in the info box to this video. Good luck with your applications and see you soon.